Hey everyone, David here. I'm here to share with you my strategy and how I approach um, adopting testing business ideas at bigger companies. And so usually when I'm approached about this, I um, try to dig into what are the major capabilities that you need to build at, out at your company. And usually the way I try to visualize that is something like a mind map or a strategy map. And so in the center is your goal. So if your goal is, you know, continuously test new business ideas, well then what are the capabilities or the things you need to support that goal and how can I help you uh, on that journey? And so quite often we start off with the ideas themselves. Now this isn't necessarily the biggest hurdle. Uh, quite often when I come into a company, they're not lacking ideas. They have ideas everywhere. Uh, ideas are pretty cheap. It's really making those ideas testable, which becomes the challenge and why they need help. But when you think about your ideas, think about having, you know, a pipeline of work. So do we have a pipeline of ideas that we can start from really new ideas that we just thought about to ideas that are a little bit more mature that we have evidence to support? Do we have the right guidance for those ideas? So you know, if I'm working with, let's say, an automotive company, they might be wanting to branch out into mobility. And so they, they'll, they'll, they'll frame their guidance as exploring mobility ideas. If I'm working with a paint company, they don't really want to be known for paint just, you know, just always, right? They want to be known about, uh, we're a color company. So let's, our guidance is to go into ideas about color. And so having that guidance does matter because you don't want teams to stray too far from the core and then not end up investing in the ideas just because, even though there was something there, it wasn't aligned to the strategy or the mission, vision, vision values of the company. And then incentives. And, and this is a big one as well. When you think about incentives, think about, okay, um, what is going to be the incentives around these ideas? And, and I always want teams to bring their, their best ideas to work, right? And so it doesn't mean you have to write them a big check and present it to them in front of the whole company if their ideas is as a success. Although I have seen that out here in Silicon Valley, that has occurred uh, more than once. But uh, you do need to think about the incentive structure around the ideas and, and how they're going to be taken forward, just so it's not just um, you have to come up with these ideas in your spare time uh, while you go home. <laughs> you want to be able to really tap into your employees best work and incentivize them to do so. The next uh, is, is really about the teams. You know, the teams are so crucial to making this work. Uh, quite often, I argue for them to be dedicated. I don't always win that battle, but, you know, basically dedicated teams um, do uh, outperform teams that are multitasking across four projects at once. And so if you want to test a new idea, having a team that is dedicated certainly does help in that endeavor. Uh, also, having them be cross-functional. With um, teams, you want to look at through the lens of uh, desirability, viability, and feasibility, which you've heard me speak about many times and write about in testing business ideas, uh, pulling from design thinking there. Uh, but if you don't have representatives on your team that can speak to each theme of work, then uh, it's really challenging to pull these ideas forward. So desirability, viability, feasibility usually means you need at least uh, design, product, and technology or engineering representation on the team to be able to balance uh, and address that risk and be able to move it forward. Now that doesn't mean those are the only roles you need. Quite often you need to reach out to legal and safety and compliance and others to make it uh, a business idea that is viable going forward. However, uh, just keep in mind that it's really going to be tough to pull ideas forward with teams that don't have the right capabilities, don't have the right representation. And then entrepreneurial, um, this is probably uh, obvious, but you have a lot of creative people inside your companies already. There are the people that saved that project from the fire. There are people that were able to uh, deal with really extreme uncertainty. And so please uh, give them a chance. Um, don't always look outside the company to pull in entrepreneurial people. Look inside your company and see, hey, are, do we have entrepreneurial people that we can pull in to help support us to continuously test new business ideas? One of the most important parts is the is experiments. Uh, you know, you're going to be able to uh, run experiments, do them quickly. Quite often, you usually need a library or a toolkit to do so. Uh, that's one of the reasons I wrote the book with Alex Osterwalder was give people at least um, a subset of experiments that they can flip through and choose to run. Uh, if you have uh, another list, you know, whatever you need as far as a toolkit to pull from, you're going to need access to customers. This is also really important with access. Um, it's hard to test new ideas if you can't get to the customers. And so being able to work through what are the challenges with legal or whatever we need as far as policies and procedures that we either have to go around or augment to get to customers, but you do need to create deep customer um, 
uh, create deep customer empathy. You're going to have to get access to them and that's really key. And then coaching support. This is also, you know, usually if it's internal or external, it's just really hard for people to work this way if they've never worked this way before. And so if you have, let's say, ex startup people that you've um, pulled into the teams through acquisitions or you need to look outside to coaching and consultants, but basically having somebody to kind of shepherd you through that process, teach you how to do it, and then you can run with it yourselves. So I think um, having that kind of support around the experiments obviously helps quite a bit. And then last but not least, funding. So um, it is important to fund these initiatives. I will say um, probably the biggest thing is just protected funding for these new ideas. It's very frustrating for me to be in an org where we set aside, let's say, a million dollars to fund several ideas. And then halfway through, uh, we're, we're out 500,000 that's been routed to a different idea to test or a patent thing or uh, something we didn't even plan on and the money just got routed without our knowing. And so even if it means you have to um, set up a, a wholly owned legal you know, uh, entity to hold the money, whatever it is, but please protect it. That's really one of the toughest things I find in bigger companies is the money gets rerouted to different places. Usually um, what we pair with this kind of working is sort of a metered funding or an incremental funding. It's basically you want to place your bets and then you want to increase the size of your bets as you generate evidence and as you're on the right track. If you're not, you just sort of sunset that thing and you say, okay, we're not, we're going to celebrate that we didn't invest in this idea. What's a new thing? And that's why the ideas are an important part of the pipeline. And so the metered funding goes really well with that. I've also heard it called um, internal VC funding, but whatever you want to call it, you know, making sure that you're not overfunding initiatives, especially when they're really new. You don't want to go all in on your funding if the uncertainty is really high. And then you're probably going to need to set up some kind of committee or a board internally. These are people that have decision-making authority and can help you navigate these kind of pivot, persevere, or uh, sunset opportunities when you're bringing your, you know, your teams are bringing their evidence and they're saying, hey, these are the hypotheses we had, the experiments we ran, uh, we, we think we should go forward. Having a committee that can help fund those and make decisions is really, really important because you want to be able to tie that decision making to funding. And then you get more funding if you need to run more experiments and you eventually get to a point where it's something you want to scale. So funding is really key as well. And so I just wanted to kind of walk through this with all of you because visually I feel like I'm a very visual person. I, I, I pull from visual management styles quite often. When I've approached uh, organizational transformations in the past, this is how I've approached it with executive teams and boards. And so um, this is by, by no means the end of the journey by creating a map like this, but you start to get a feel for, ooh, what does funding mean for us? Or where are we going to take these ideas from? Or how do we start to configure these teams? Or what are we going to do with experiments? There are probably hundreds of other little tasks and branches coming out from these trees from these main themes, but it's important that those are tied back to the capabilities and the capabilities support your, your goal. And I think what is tragic is I see people go off in many, many different directions trying to build a culture of experimentation and it's not always tied back to the goal. So if your goal is to continuously test new business ideas, then it is important to have a strategy and be able to visualize it and tie everything back so you stay on track. Okay, so I thought I'd share this with you all. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks everyone.